Grade 6 math, number 9.4b, more integer subtraction. So this is a little extra help for the people who still need it. I wanted to show you this. When there's only one operation sign between two integers, we can put parentheses around each integer to help us see them better. If you have 2 minus 4, just put little parentheses around them because there's one operation sign in between here. And it'll help you see that there's a negative 3 minus a 5. And we know that when there's no sign, that it's a positive 5 or a positive 4, positive 6, positive 2, right? That we're just taking away that positive number. Now, the reason there's an asterisk here is when there's more than one operation, because it says when there's only one operation or one sign, see? When there's more than one operation sign, there's already parentheses. If you've got 2 minus negative 4, it's already going to have parentheses around the negative 4. And if we've got negative 7 minus negative 6, it's already going to have parentheses around it. If it doesn't, then it's a typo in the book. So when you just see one operation sign, like a plus or a minus, coming down the middle of two integers, and you're having trouble looking at this, and it's like your brain is going a little crazy, oh, I'm getting so tired of looking at these numbers, just put a little parentheses around each one, and it'll help you see them better, okay? All right, so these are the same problems as in 9.4a. They're just, we're just looking at it in a different way, okay? My belief is when you don't understand something, you don't keep beating it the same way. You find a back door or you go underneath the wall or something to find a way in, okay? So here was our problem. We had negative 4 minus negative 1, and it came out as negative 3. This is how. Bob is in debt $4, okay, to Emma. This negative 4 means he owes $4 to Emma. But Emma is going to take away a dollar of that debt. See? When we see the negative, I want you to think of owing money. All right? So Emma is taking away an, a dollar of the debt. See? There's a $4 debt, and Emma takes away a dollar of that debt. So now he just owes her $3. Maybe he did her a favor. You know? Maybe he helped her carry something, and she said, Tell you what, you don't owe me four. You only owe me three. I'm going to take away a dollar of the debt. Okay? See? All right, Bob owes $7 to Emma. He's in debt, $7 to Emma. But for some reason, Emma takes away $5 of the debt. Again, maybe he drove her somewhere and she said, you know what, you drive me to work and I'll take away $5 of that debt. And he was like, all right. So now she, he only owes her $2, see? So you can take away some of the debt, see? Now he owes her $2, but he's still in debt. He's still negative to her, but not as much. See? All right. Emma has $7, and Bob pays her $2 of his debt. See? Remember the negative number means debt. So Emma's got $7, and Bob gives her $2 of the debt that he owes her. Now she's got $9. Look at that. See? All right. Emma has $4. Bob pays her $3 that he owes her, now Emma has $7. See, he's taking away $3 of the debt he owes her. He's taking away $3 of the debt. When you take away $3 of a debt, that means you're paying somebody, right? You're taking away the debt. That means you're adding money. So by taking away $3 of his debt, Emma now has $7, okay? Bob owes Emma a dollar, all right? He's a dollar in debt to Emma, and then he takes away another five. Now he's in debt to her six dollars. See how that happened? Let's look at this one. Emma had four dollars, and Bob took away three dollars of his debt. He See the negative sign? He took away three dollars of the debt. That means now Emma had seven dollars. By taking away the debt, he gave her money, but now... He took more money. Do you see how this has got a, a negative sign and a negative sign in between the two integers? And this one, it's got a negative, then an integer, a negative, and then an integer. Okay, well, he owed her a dollar, then he took away another five dollars. Now he owes her six dollars, okay? I thought we'd do fish on this one. There's a fish that's five feet below the surface of the water. It's way down here, and it's going to dive another four feet. 
Now it's nine feet below the water. See? It would almost be the same as Bob and this one. If Bob owed Emma $5 and he borrowed another $4, now he's $9 in debt. See? All right. This is the easy one to keep our brain going. Bob has $4. He pays $3 to Emma. Now he's got a dollar. Okay? That's the kindergarten math that we all should know. But we have to keep our brain going. Okay? All right. Now Bob has $4 to his name. But Emma sells him a phone case for 7 so now he owes her three. He gave her the four, but he's still three dollars in debt to her because he didn't have the full seven. So they made a deal and she said, fine, you give me the money you've got and you're going to owe me three dollars. And he was like, oh, okay. All right. So now we'll do our little hills and hole thing. We have an eight foot hill and we're going to take away 14 feet of dirt. If we have an eight foot hill and we take away 14 feet of dirt, it's going to put us six feet into the ground. We'll have a six-foot hole, wouldn't we? It's just like this one. See? If Bob had $8 and he bought something from Emma for 14 he would give her the money he had, but he'd still owe her six, see? And it's just like having an eight-foot hill, but digging down 14 feet, you've dug away all of the hill, and you kept going and made a six-foot hole, see? So if you need to use money, then use money. If you need to use the red and green chips, use the red and green chips. If you need to use the water surface, then do that. Find some way that will help you subtract the integers. I think the borrowing and paying money and the red and green chips are the best way. I've found with other students that it's the most easily understood. But everybody's different, so you pick the one that you like the most. Okay, we're going to continue talking about subtracting integers and the rules in the next video. Bye.